you get France involved, which means you get NATO involved. And then you're heading for a wider America conflict. orchestrated a terror attack using Kiev against Russia, kill Russian citizens, demoralize the Russian nation, you know. What is the basis? Why did Russia go to war with Ukraine? He says, you can't join NATO. Because if you join NATO, Ukraine joins NATO. You're going to have NATO missiles and NATO tanks. Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. And before I start this video, I have a request to make. Friends, we have mobile phone apps by the name of Chanakya Forum. They're available for your Apple devices and also available for your Android devices. Please go ahead and download these apps. Are you preparing for UPSC? Are you preparing for any competitive exam? Do you know our articles are not written by journalists? Our articles are written by top professionals of their field. Army generals who have spent literally 40 years in uniform, who have served in the most difficult sectors. Our articles on diplomacy, our articles on, on, on foreign affairs are written by diplomats. People who have been, you know, high commissioners, people who have been uh, uh, ambassadors to various countries. There are people who are part of elite think tanks. These are the kind of people who write for Chanakya Forum. Please download this app. It's absolutely free of cost. And let us know your views. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link down below in the description box. Just go there, download the app, start reading. Now, uh, friends, this whole thing about Russia and Ukraine, it's getting more and more complicated. The first news is that France is actually mulling over deploying troops in the war, Ukraine and Russia war. And uh, there is a lot of talk going on. There is a lot of chatter in mainstream media and social media that French government is actually thinking about putting in French troops. Now, this will be absolutely detrimental. This is not a good idea. And we are friends of the French. We are friends of the Russians. And uh, India provides a unique bridge between these two countries. Unique bridge. Because... Because, you know, these are our friends and time-tested friendship is there. And this is what I have, you know, when I, I talk about my research here in this matter. This is what I have for you, my friends. Sergei Shoigu, this is the Russian defense minister. He warned his French counterpart against deploying troops to Ukraine in a rare phone call. So the, the foreign minister of Russia actually called up the foreign minister of France and he said, don't do it. Don't do it. You get France involved, which means you get NATO involved. And then you're heading for a wider conflict. So far, ladies and gentlemen, so far, and I've said this time and again, I'll take the liberty of repeating it in front of you. So far, this war has not seen any horizontal escalation. It may have seen vertical escalation, no doubt. In any war, vertical escalation is extremely likely. That is what happens in kinetic conflict. What is vertical escalation? When the caliber of the weapons being used escalates, when you use a higher caliber of weapon, when you use more and more dangerous weapons. That is called vertical escalation. So that has happened, most certainly. But what has not happened is horizontal escalation, which means that the conflict, the frontage of the conflict has not expanded. It's roughly 1,000, 1,200 kilometers is, is the frontage of this conflict. That is what I know from my various readings. Now, what happens if France puts its troops? Just imagine. The French army starts fighting on the side of the Ukrainians. What happens? Only one thing. This war will move into Western Europe. And Western Europe is no longer used to fighting. It's, there is a certain Western European aversion to body bags. There is a certain American aversion to body bags or Canadian aversion to body bags, Australian aversion to body bags. There is no Russian aversion to body bags. Whether theirs or the enemies, they don't care. The Russians will just keep on fighting. And there is no point. The only way there is going to be peace is when immense diplomatic pressure is put on both the Russians and the Ukrainians. This cannot be one-sided. The problem with the Russians, I'll tell you what. I understand. I've started understanding the Russian mindset. When you read Russian literature, when you read uh, Russian novels, Russian books, you have a view into the mindset of the people. Every people in the world have different mindsets, you know. Countries have mindsets. That is true. Countries have similar mindsets. Individuals may think differently. And no two individuals think alike. But countries have certain sets of, of behavior, a certain behavioral pattern. And I will tell you about the Russians. If they know that there is outside influence, all of them will stand together. 
and do not make the mistake, I'm telling this to Western Europe, I'm telling this to the Americans, do not make the mistake of thinking that just because there are people, there are politicians inside Russia who are against Putin, don't make the mistake of thinking that they will side with you in case of a war. They might be against Putin's policies, they might be against Putin, they are not against Russia. And they will stand firm. I've said this before, I'll say this again. Now, look at this. Shoigu, who's Sergei Shoigu, is the Russian Defense Minister, and he said that uh, he said that uh, Moscow's readiness for dialogue on Ukraine. You know, he says we are ready for that, and uh, but you can't have a dialogue with uh, Moscow or with uh, or let's say let's say you can't have a dialogue, a uh, peace dialogue. You know, in in the Russian in the context of the Russia-Ukraine war, you can't have a peace dialogue and not include Russia. This is the stupidity that has been going on for quite some time. So there have been dozens of peace dialogues here, literally dozens, you know, two countries talking in the sidelines, two countries to, uh, talking at the, you know, sides of a summit like that. I'm not saying all formal, informal, etc. But the problem with Western Europe and the problem with America is that when they talk about peace, when they talk about peace between Russia and Ukraine, they do not think that Russia is a party. Isn't that stupid? You want peace between Russia and Ukraine, but you're not willing to talk to Russia. You just want to talk to Ukraine. What you want to do is you want to build up pressure which is one-sided. Russia will never cave in to one-sided pressure. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It will never happen. You know, in the early 90s, Russia broke up into 15 countries. It did not bend then. It did not buckle. It was unfortunate Russia broke, the USSR broke up into 15 countries. But the fact of the matter is, you, you can break Russia, you can't bend Russia. And if you think that you can break Russia today, when I say break Russia, I mean it's been broken in the past. USSR finally became Russia. But if you think that you're going to put so much of pressure that, you know, the Russians will surrender, that's not going to happen. I mean, don't go in that direction. You'll just lead to more bloodshed. Because Putin is not the kind of a guy, no Russian leader worth his salt is going to give up. Uh, now, Shoigu emphasized Moscow's readiness for dialogue, of course. The draft reportedly including provisions for Ukraine to abandon its NATO bid and remain neutral, but no final deal was reached. Now, so what he's saying is that our basis for the war with Ukraine, what is the basis? Why did Russia go to war with Ukraine? He says, you can't join NATO. We will not permit you to join NATO. You can't do that. Because if you join NATO, uh, once you join NATO, when Ukraine joins NATO, you're going to have NATO missiles and NATO tanks right at Russia's throat. And, and Ukraine touches uh, Russia's, uh, you know, uh, I will not say westernmost part, but yeah, when, when it's, you know, touches Eastern Europe at least. Ukraine is Eastern Europe. And it's strategically very important to the Russians, yeah, very important to the Russians that, uh, that uh, you know, Ukraine does not join NATO. They, they have nothing against Ukraine except for the fact that they want to join NATO. And once you do that, then it's lights off, at least for the Russians. They'll say lights off, yeah, then we are going to war. This is exactly what Russia did more than two years back. And uh, Shoigu asserted that Moscow has information implicating Ukraine in organizing the terror attack, suggesting Ukrainian involvement with Western support. Now, this is the second news. This is the second news that I was going to discuss with you today. Uh, now, the French special services were urged not to be involved with Shoigu, implying suspicion of Western complicity. So what happens is that now U.S. bears some responsibility. This is what the Russians are saying, that U.S. bears some responsibility for Moscow concert attack. Everyone knows that Kiev is... Basically, what they are saying is that, you know, these attackers who attacked and they killed, I think, 145 odd people in that concert attack last week, uh, outskirts of Moscow. These guys, after carrying out the attack, were headed towards Ukraine and Russian intelligence has found out that they were granted safe passage. They were literally granted safe passage by the, by the Ukrainians. They did not, uh, they were not able to make it there, but they were granted in the sense that uh, they were told by the Ukrainians that, well, you have safe passage here. Yeah. You're granted safe passage. All you have to do is go and you can disappear somewhere in Ukraine. Ukraine is not a small country. It's pretty large. You can disappear anywhere. This is what the Russians believe and this is what the Russians, uh, uh, their, their, their intelligence community has found out. And they are saying that since Kiev, Kiev is the capital of Ukraine, since Kiev is supported by the Americans, the Russians feel that Americans knew. 
they feel that Americans knew what was happening. They felt that uh, the Ukrainians paid for it or at least uh, instigated this terror attack through the Tajiks. And they also have reason to believe that uh, the at least tacitly, the Americans were involved. And a few weeks before the attack, what the Americans did was they uh, they gave Russia a tip saying that, you know, there is going to be an attack. There is going to be a terror attack. So Russia feels that America deliberately said there is going to be a terror attack because they knew that there were lots of tensions between America and Russia and Russia would never believe it. There will be a terror attack and then America will be able to insulate itself by saying that, hey, listen, you know, we already told you there is going to be an attack. If we wanted to plan the attack, we would not have told you. However, the way Russia analyzes this entire thing is that, listen, you told us deliberately because you knew that there was a breakdown in communication and we would not take that seriously. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is a, this is a very sophisticated and I don't know, this is, seems like a deception plan. That's what Russia is hinting at. Russia is saying that this is a very sophisticated deception plan by America in which America orchestrated a terror attack using Kiev against Russia kill Russian citizens, demoralize the Russian nation, you know, they are in the middle of war and suddenly somebody hits Moscow. It's a big deal. It doesn't matter whether you hit Moscow by a missile, right, or by an aircraft or through a terror attack, but you hit Moscow. I think that is the game that Russia is trying to hint at. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll come to the question and answers. The first question is Yatish. Good day, Major sir. Good day, Yatish. So, Yatish ji is saying that if anyone is desperate to go to USA, all they have to do is take a flight to Mexico and just cross the border. With Biden administration, it's easy to get citizenship now. Millions of criminals are getting into southern US border and gaining rights to the country. Who is Joe Biden fooling by reducing the H-1B visa waiting time? Most likely, the Indian diaspora already living there. Yeah, so, so Biden, you see, I am against illegal immigration and, uh, you know, uh, India has also faced massive illegal immigration. The Rohingyas are here and I think half of Bangladesh is in India now. So there is a problem. And what the Americans are doing is NRC. Or what, what, what Trump is promising is NRC. What uh, Pakistan has done to the Afghans is NRC. Pakistan has thrown out uh, more than 500,000 uh, you know, Afghans, and they are planning to throw out, there are 1.7 million Afghans in the country, 500,000 or 600,000 they've already thrown out, the rest they are planning to throw out. What is Pakistan doing? NRC. I don't know why Pakistan is objecting against the Indian NRC, where Pakistan has already done its own NRC. They just implemented it. They just said, hell with you, we are throwing out everybody, and they threw out everybody. They're doing it. America is doing it. Every country does it. But when India does it, there is a problem. So, yeah, uh, Joe Biden has allowed... People to come in and people from all over the world are landing up in America. And I, I'm just telling the Americans, your, your white population and your black population, the African-Americans in the U.S. and the whites, you are going to be in a minority in the next 10, 15 years. Mark my words. You're going to be in a minority. You'll So many nations, you know, who are unstable, who are uh, facing civil war, drought, starvation, economic collapse. Everybody from those countries, and they want to get to the U.S. somehow. And the best way is the Mexican border. Fly to Mexico, cross over illegally, live somewhere. That's what they're doing. And, uh, and uh, you should actually build that wall. You should go ahead and build that wall. Otherwise, you're in deep trouble. Not that I'm a Trump supporter, but sometimes... What Trump says makes a lot of sense. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this video. And before I say goodbye, I'll again request you, you know, to uh, download our mobile phone apps on Android, on iOS, and read the latest articles, especially you guys who are preparing for competitive exams like the UPSC or any other competitive exam. You will find some of the finest articles on Chanakya Forum. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. For watching this video. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel, don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.